This is the design that we will print on t-shirts. I will show you how I will separate the colors of the design as positives. Click pick tool. Select the design by clicking and holding the left button of the mouse while dragging the mouse on the design. Here you will see the size of the design, it's 4.5 inches. Press plus sign on keyboard to duplicate the design. Then use the down arrow key to move the duplicate downwards. Press plus sign again to duplicate the design and use arrow key to move the duplicate design downwards. Press plus sign again to duplicate the design and use arrow key to move the duplicate design downwards. Now we have four copies of the design. Press plus sign again to duplicate the design and drag the duplicate outside the printing area. It will be our master copy of the design. Zoom in the top design. Click pick tool, select the design, click ungroup on the property bar. To select the design by clicking on the background, we will create the positive for the base white. Click on the round red and color it with black. Put white outline. Here you will see that white outline reduces the size of the circle. Delete the small circle and the F logo. Then color the outline of the flow torque with black. Select flow and torque and color it with white. Put black outline by right clicking the black on color palette. And click on outline on toolbar and select the outline size. You will notice that flow and torque thins a little. Delete Technologies Corporation. Select the rectangular red and fill it with black by clicking the black on color palette. Put white outline by right clicking the white. Then click on the outline on toolbar and select the size of the outline. Notice the rectangle thins a little. This is the positive for our base white. This time we will make the positive for the red color. Zoom in the logo, click pick tool, click the design and click on group on the property bar, click on background to deselect, click and delete the small round yellow. Click and delete the flow torque outline. And click torque and delete. Click flow and color it with black. Click the rectangular red and color it with black. Click the round red and color it with black. Click the F logo and color it with white and right click on black to put black outline on F logo. And select outline size on toolbar. Notice the F logo thins a little. This is the positive for the red color. Then we will make the positive of the color blue. Click the design. Click on group on the property bar. Click on the background to deselect. Click and delete everything except the torque. Then click torque and color it with black. Then adjust the location of the torque by pressing left arrow key on keyboard. Then we will make the positive for the color yellow. Click the design and click on group on property bar. Click on the background to deselect. Select some parts of the logo and delete. Zoom in the remaining logo. Click pick tool and select small yellow circle. Change the fountain fill to 80% black to white. Do some adjustments. Then convert the small circle to 150 dpi grayscale bitmap. Then convert it to half tone. Then click the F logo and color it with black. Then delete the round red. Then we will adjust the distance of the positives. Then I will duplicate the positives, and rotate it by 180 degrees. And do some adjustments again. You might be wondering why I duplicate the positives. It's just a backup. So that if something goes wrong during the developing and washing or printing of the t-shirts I have a backup. Then we will print the positives, click printer icon on property bar. Click properties, click grayscale, click high quality. Then OK and print. By the way, I'm using Epson L120 printer, ordinary paper copier and ordinary dye ink. 
After printing the positive we will prepare the photo emulsion that we will use in developing our screen stencil. This is a leftover photo emulsion mix from my previous project. This is the photo emulsion. And this is a photo sensitizer. Add new photo emulsion to the photo emulsion mix and add photo sensitizer. The mixture should be 9 is to 1 or 90% photo emulsion and 10% photo sensitizer. Stir the mixture. Photo sensitizer makes the photo emulsion sensitive to light. Photo emulsion hardens once exposed to light, making it ideal in making photo stencils. Then we will apply the photo emulsion mix on our screen using a scoop coater. Pour photo emulsion mix on scoop coater and apply it on the screen. By the way I'm using 100 mesh screen. Once applied, the photo emulsion dries within 15 to 30 minutes using an electric fan. Return the excess photo emulsion in the container. Turn off the light and wait for the photo emulsion to dry then we will apply second coating. This second coating will ensure that our screen is properly coated with photo emulsion. After applying the second coating we will set up the positive we printed earlier on our screen. In setting up the positive on screen we will use this cooking oil. Pour cooking oil on screen, spread the cooking oil using forefinger, and adhere the positive. Add oil if necessary, remove trapped bubbles between the positive and screen using the forefinger. I will cut the positive into two, I will separate them a little so that I will have more space during printing, then we will expose the screen with positive to daylight for 30 seconds. Let's expose the screen to daylight. You will see here that the sun is covered by clouds. I will use my cell phone as timer. After exposing the screen for 30 seconds we will wash the screen. We will use a water hose in washing the screen. Wet the inner side of the screen first. Then the other side, remove the positives. You will notice that the design is lighter in color. This is the covered part during exposure to daylight while the unprinted part of paper is the part exposed to light. This part reacted to light, it darkens and hardens. Continue spraying the screen stencil until the unexposed part softens, and it will eventually fall off the screen. After almost one minute of spraying the unexposed part is soft now. Control the blow of water using the finger, adjust the faucet if necessary. Target the design. You will notice that unwanted photo emulsions are being washed off the screen, creating an opening. This opening is where the paint will pass through during printing. Be careful in spraying the screen with water, too much water pressure can damage the design. Small logos are one of the hardest to wash, because you can easily damage it. And sometimes it's hard to get those fine details because it's too small that you can easily overexpose them during exposure to light, making it harder to wash even if you target it with water. And if you're a beginner, sometimes you have to do this process a few times in order to perfect it. After 3 minutes of washing it's almost finished. Double check the openings. Look for scums and target it with water. Continue spraying until all the openings or designs are clear from unwanted photo emulsion, 
then we will remove trapped water on the openings of our screen stencils using a cotton rug. Tap the cotton rug on our screen stencil. You will notice that the cotton rug is absorbing the water on the openings of our screen stencil. It's important to remove this trapped water. Sometimes this water is sticky and can still block the openings of the screen stencil if not removed properly. Then wait for the screen stencil to dry, then we will apply photo hardener on our screen stencil to make it tougher and durable. The photo hardener. Wet cotton ball with photo hardener and apply it on our screen. By the way hardener is a different chemical from sensitizer, although they have the same color. Wait for the photo hardener to dry then we will tape our screen stencil to prevent paint leaks during printing. Tape the edges of the screen, this is a scotch tape. You can also use other kinds of tape like masking tape or packing tape. After taping our screen we will start the printing. In printing the t-shirts we will use this small pad. Put shirt on top of the shirt pad and let's begin. I will also use this plastic squeegee. Put super white on the screen stencil and start the printing. I set up chairs and this metal rod beside me so that I can easily go back and forth to do the printing and hanging of the t-shirts. This is a rubberized water-based paint. For me the thicker the deposit of paint the better. I will be printing 300 shirts. This is a rush project, so in order to finish the printing on time I need to do the printing this way. A little risky, some might say, but it works. This is the fifth t-shirt. I will hang 15 t-shirts on the metal rod. So I will just continue printing until the 15th t-shirts. And on this 16th t-shirts I will put substantial amount of paint on top of the design so that the paint will not dry while I'm away. I will transfer the first 15 t-shirts to another area to dry. Return the metal rod. And resume the printing. We will continue printing until we reach 15 t-shirts, 
and on the 16th we will put substantial amount of paint on top of the design so that the paint will not dry while we are transferring the finished t-shirts to another area to dry. Repeat the printing process we did earlier until all the t-shirts are finished. Then wait for the white paint to dry then we will start printing the red. Put shirt on top of the small pad. Put red water based rubberized paint on our screen stencil. I will be using this plastic squeegee. Let's begin. This is what it would look like after printing the red. Just like what we did earlier we will hang the finished t-shirt on the metal rod. By the way I have a video on how I mix the water based rubberized paint that I'm using, just click the suggested video on the top right corner of this video if you're interested. Just like printing the first color white, we will follow the same printing pattern. Continue printing until the metal rod is full of 15 t-shirts. And on this 16th t-shirt put substantial amount of paint on top of the design so that the paint will not dry while we are transferring the first 15th t-shirts to another area to dry. Return the metal rod, resume the printing. Just like what we did earlier we will do the same process of printing until all the t-shirts are finished. Then wait for the red paint to dry then we will print the third color yellow. In printing the yellow we will use this small squeegee. Put yellow paint on screen stencil and let's begin. Just like what we did earlier we will hang the finished t-shirts on the metal rod. By the way I have a video on making plastic squeegees, like the one that I'm using. If you're interested just click the suggested video on the top right corner of this video. Then just continue printing. Following the same printing pattern we did earlier printing the previous colors. Then wait for the yellow paint to dry then we will print the last color blue. In printing the blue we will use this plastic squeegee. Put blue water based rubberized paint on screen stencil and let's begin. Again, in printing the blue we will do the same printing pattern we did earlier printing the previous colors until all the t-shirts are finished. By the way this water based paints that I'm using dries naturally. I don't have to apply heat to cure the paint, and that's what I like about the water based paints. It's very durable and does not crack easily. It's an old school paint. It's been around for quite some time now but lost its popularity to Plastisol inks. If you have any questions or suggestions just type it at the comments below, and thanks for watching. And that's it. I hope you learn from my videos. Please don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for more videos.